MK Sunil, Country Manager, AEC Autodesk India and Sark. Kamal Sagar, Founder and Chairman, Total Environment. And Naveen Enmandra, Vice President, Architecture, Total Environment. On behalf of everybody here, I want to welcome Total Environment. They don't need any introduction, but um, what I have seen is homes that bring nature into cityscapes. You know, that's what you're popular for. He's an architect, but today he makes buildings. So I want to ask you, Kamal, what is the philosophy behind Total Environment? So uh, it all started when you, you know, when we when you look at where the housing industry was uh, when I started out in 1996. Uh, I think it's very commercialized and so it was limited to just decoration and styling and not, not really design. There were very few examples of uh, good architecture in the housing space uh, besides the Habitat by uh, Moshe Safdi in Montreal and Kanchen Junga Apartments by Charles Correa in Bombay. There were very few real examples. So uh, when you really thought about uh, housing, uh, multi-dwelling housing and apartments, what, you, what came to your mind was something like this, which is uh, you know, a place that you can kind of manage to live in uh, for some time. And then you would always have this notion that at some point in time, I'm going to build my dream house, but temporarily I will live here. And uh, while you could you know, spend a lot of money on expensive interiors, furniture, marble floors, art, uh, the inherent nature of the space didn't really change. It was what it was and you had to kind of manage with that. On the other hand, uh, there were things like this. This is uh, the Fansworth House, which I'm sure everyone over here knows about, uh, where from you know, all four directions, as far as you could see, you would see green or uh, Frank Lloyd Wright's Falling Water House, a completely different experience. So the question really for us was, how do we create this kind of an experience in a housing project inside a city in a high density, high rise uh, building. And uh, that was kind of the inspiration. So, uh, but we realized very soon that it's not gonna work just as architects because we did talk to uh, several companies and you know, we would get brushed aside because of very, uh, you know, uh, many other reasons. And so we finally realized that the only way it's gonna work is we will have to take on that task and we'll have to do what we strongly believe in uh, buy land, design, build, and actually demonstrate what we think can be done. And that's how uh, Total Environment was born, uh, really to try and provide this unsurpassed experience. So, uh, over the years we've explored different ways uh, of creating that, gardens inside the homes, uh, sometimes like in this case where uh, the windows are outside and the gardens are actually inside the home, or uh, other examples of um, this is just this is office building and you know gardens cantilevering out from different floors uh, sometimes very small just ten feet by ten feet or eight by eight and uh, but that little green space that you could step out onto or larger gardens like at this place where these are um, close to a thousand square foot gardens nineteen story towers you actually have people growing even trees, uh, banana trees on, on the, uh, in their gardens, and it gives you that sense of uh, engaging with nature and embracing nature. So that's really what we've tried to do in uh, many different ways, uh, try to engage, and also, more than anything else, just to uh, create a home and not just a space that you can manage to live in, a home that takes care of all the very simple basic needs, uh, nothing very uh, superfluous, nothing, uh, uh, it was not about expensive materials, all about just the right kind of uh, stuff, just to give you that sense. Right, um, and I also understand that now you have moved away from your 2D process and you have embraced BIM process. So Naveen, can you tell me what, how it has helped in your design and construction of these beautiful homes? Sure. Uh, so actually, like Kamal said, as architects and engineers, we just want to focus on design. And so for us, uh, being productive was extremely important. And we uh, 
so what we were trying to find ways and means of uh, reducing the time it takes to you know uh, do our work so i'll just give you two small examples of how you know we've been able to harness uh, autodesk capabilities to automate a lot of our tasks so one is uh, one was done by our structural team mm. we affectionately call it the beamer because it helps us do you know uh, beam design drafting on the fly so this is a short video of how and this was done some 6 7 years back where we wanted our structural engineers to just focus on the design and the values that they get from the spreadsheet they could generate uh, detailed beam drawings including cross sections and long sections showing the kind of rebars so this is completely done on the fly no manual drafting involved and it also generated the quantity of steel that you would use in each beam along with the bar bending schedule because that's very important for us as a real estate company so this is something that was done in house but it was uh, done using autolisp in autodesk and that was some time back now that we have dynamo uh, with us and uh, we've got a lot of young architects who are not just architects who are very technical in nature so one of our architects you know we had this situation where we had more than 1000 trees and uh, it was given to us by the surveyor in a spreadsheet format with the location of the trees shown and the type of tree the girth and all of that the the species of the tree and now we had to get all this data into revit and make it part of a survey plan so this was a simple excel spreadsheet dynamo script and it populated in 10 minutes which would have taken us maybe about 2 weeks for a, a, an architect to spend time and which would have been more fruitful you know doing it uh, you know uh, focusing on design so those are the two examples great uh, so kamal i actually heard about e design there's a platform that you have developed uh, using uh, revit and the options within revit um, so how did that come about how did you uh, do it why did you do it so so part of the whole uh, goal was to ensure that people actually get homes that work for them uh, all over the world currently the the industry still tends to put you into a standard home you buy a three bedroom or a four bedroom home and then you have to adjust your lifestyle around that home and i think we felt that uh, that's not fair uh, people have very different backgrounds they have very different uh, lifestyles very different needs and you can't just force fit them so we felt we needed to uh, custom build every single home from the inside uh, including allowing changes even in wall position so that it can make rooms smaller or larger or change the configuration we did this manually for many years uh with a initially from 96 to about 2004 we did it completely manually where we had tons of architects working on this and then we started uh, trying to automate it and we created what we called e build uh which we used all the way till uh, last year and uh, that brought down the time a lot brought down the number of people but we were still spending about between 90 to 120 hours uh generating one set of drawings for one home uh, at the at the end of the whole thing after the process was done uh there were typically more than 100 drawings for one home so we started working with thoughtworks uh a couple of years ago to create a brand new version of this platform which we now call e design uh, which allows you to log in in uh, in 3d look at uh, you know uh, your floor plan change the different configurations uh work with you know various options on the floor plan layout and then the furniture layout and then enhance features add air conditioning or uh, you know mosquito mesh shutters or central vacuum system um and uh, so this just shows you how it changes configuration on the plan and gives you the pricing real time on top uh, so you know what you're spending as you make every single change and if so the customers can log in from anywhere in the world they can log in they can work in partnership the husband could be in japan and the wife could be in bangalore and they can work together on the platform um even including the landscaping there are options to re to design the, the way the landscaping is set out um and then go into the furniture layout within the space work out different options for how the furniture can sit get all and the quantity yeah and gives you the boq of, of you know all the breakdown of the cost if you want to go into detail and see what space is costing you and 
and then you go into feature enhancement, you can add stuff um, to make your homework better. And then you go into what we call the design studio, which is where you have several different themes. You can select one that you like, and then it will apply uh, all those finishes and materials to your space. So. So these are, for people here, these are actually various options built in Revit and then taken into a web space where people are choosing different options and, of course, going and customizing kitchen yeah. layouts. Yeah. Down to the cabinetry, the shelving, so you go into what we call functional planning and you can select uh, how every piece works. So that's the equipment. Yeah, so your ovens or your chimneys. And then you can go to electrical and actually select which which you want to use to control which light. Or add additional sockets. So basically you give control to the owners to actually customize each yes. of their rooms and anything that's there. That's the whole idea. Yeah. So let them do it. And then finally you go to the store where you can purchase stuff like uh, chairs or table lamps or loose furniture and stuff like that and add that to your basket and, and then check out. And then finally, that's the output from the system. So you get your drawings, which can directly be printed, uh, signed on DocuSign, and then they can be printed by the guys so at all site. So all the options that have been selected gets logged on Revit yes. file, and that's how you generate all the drawings. Yes, then all these output files are generated, and the site guys can build it up. So with this, uh, I think the, uh, the time is reduced to just about an hour. Yeah, earlier it used to be over 200 hours of uh, creating a customer set and also creating the GFC drawings to issue to the site. It's all reduced to less than an hour. We don't require any more a senior designer on architect review because it's already reviewed, the options are already baked in. Uh, also, because we started working on the e-design, we've started using Dynamo more. Uh, essentially because there were a lot of things that were mundane and repetitive. So we, we, we moved all of those processes, started moving all those processes into Dynamo so that the model is ready to be consumed by e-design. So, so there were a lot of youngsters involved who were like extremely passionate and creative around this creation of e-design. So we're fortunate. It's just amazing statistics, you know, 120 hours reduced to one hour. I mean, there couldn't be better statistics than that. Thank you for uh, thank you. coming here, uh, Kamal, and uh, sharing with us your work. Thank uh, you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, I have some... Uh, uh, so just this two bags. Oh, I'll give it later. Come thank you, Sunil. Thank you, Kamal and Naveen.